look at me all early and everything today. <laughs> hey, welcome to Monday. It is Monday. I see everybody chatting over there and I see uh, I got a new chatting friend, Clinton Randolph. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Very, very much appreciated. How is everyone today? I, you saw my topic for today. I'm not going to lie. I got a little stress and pressure going on. Um, boy, uh, we are like packing phenoms around here because I, it's getting really real for me now because I have set up the movers for next week. And I've set up all, I like, you know, you guys probably know this when you're moving, like the big thing is getting the internet service switched over so that you have no downtime other than moving day. Like, oh, so stressful. Um, so I'm, 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 if everything goes well, um, I've got that done. As long as the movers get me moved, I mean, worst case scenario, I'll just make sure I get all my computers and all of that moved and I may be going back and forth. The nice thing is the house is only a few minutes away from where I'm at now. So I can do that. <laughs> but, um, you know, just getting all of those pieces put together, we are packing, we're doing two separate moves, keeping this organized. So my movers are amazing. It's, oh gosh, Tiffany, I see you over there in the chat. What is the name of the movers that we use? Oh, let's, let's get Vegas moving. I think maybe Tiffany can help me with that one. Anyway, they're really, really good movers. They've moved stuff uh, for us into the market space and I've used them um, to move some stuff here. Uh, and so I am using them for my move. So we're moving the business furniture and everything that doesn't fit in the pod on Monday. And then it gives me like one more day to kind of look around, see what else needs to be packed up. And then Wednesday, they're coming back to move the house. <sighs> I can do this. So I'm probably going to do my live from the new house next Monday. I'm, that's probably, I'll give you a little tour of where it is and, and the, the whole setup, setting up the store, setting up the new eBay digs. <laughs> I'm looking over to see if, um, if Tiffany was able to confirm. I, I think it's Let's Get Vegas Moving. I think that's the name of the moving company. I found them off of Marketplace. And um, I wasn't real sure about hiring them at first because their communication style was a little, I don't even know what the word is. Like, we kind of laughed. Like, I, I, I asked a question, some, something about, are you licensed, insured, and blah, blah, blah. And he, and he did a LOL, yes. And I'm like, well, that's not very professional. But going through Marketplace, you probably get a lot of really weird questions. So I showed him a little grace, and they turned out to be absolutely amazing movers. So um, be nice to be like a turtle and have your home on your back. <laughs> yeah, that's another big stressor for me. Now, the last two moves I've done, the it's been during the winter when the tortoises are in their little winter boxes. And so they didn't even know they were moving. Like, I just tore apart their, their pens and rebuilt them and put it in. And then when they woke up, voila, they were there. But they won't quite be asleep yet when this move happens. So I'm a little worried about disrupting their cycle and all, but I'm going to try to make it as close to what they're used to being in as possible. And it's only four minutes away. And then uh, they all go to the vet on the 12th. Like we do, we have an annual take all the tortoises for their annual checkup, make sure that there's no hidden little stuff going on that might cause them not to wake up uh, in the spring. So they get their checkups, they get weighed. They kind of, I mean, it's 
like a full physical. Plus our, our new little girl, Hope, um, if you've watched the videos, um, she was brought to me by one of my awesome viewers who rescued her from someone else. And that someone else had severely neglected this poor little girl. I mean, she's She's in the ICU right now getting um, some special treatment. They let their dog chew on her. Like, I guess she had a mate and the mate died. Um, so she's in still pretty critical um, condition. So I can't wait to hear what the vet says about if she'll even be able to brewmate this year. We may have to keep her awake, which means keeping her in the house and keeping her in upward temperatures. How is Jordan? Jordan is doing well. Um, Jordan is just, she is a chip off the old block. <laughs> She's, she is crazy busy like I am. She is um, interviewing at different companies. She's doing model shoots. She is doing freelance work. She is, she is staying very busy. Um, we, we had a great weekend, but it was a very short weekend. It just, it was not enough time. I got there late Friday night. The drive was really awful. Um, we hit big patches of like it took an extra hour and a half of traffic to get there. Um, so got there, was pretty exhausted when I got there, but we knew time, like we didn't have much time. So we jumped and went to the first Goodwill uh, of the trip and found some pretty fun stuff. And then Saturday we went to the swap meet and I did a photo shoot thing. I had, it was really weird. I had somebody following me around, like, you know, with a camera. So then people were like, Oh, what's going on? And they're like, she's a YouTuber. And like, it was, it was fun, but it was very awkward because I'm not a, I'm not a, Oh, look at me. I'm a celebrity kind of person. I'm a, I'm a, like, I need to stay very, very humble in this whole business thing. That's, you kind of my that's my life stance is you know I'm I'm just I'm just blessed to have this platform and and be given you know the ability to be able to make this work and spread good stuff. We move Las Vegas is that it? We move Las that sounds like it it sounds like that could be it. That sounds like that could be it. Um so yeah so you know it's, it's awkward. It's awkward. I don't quite know how to handle it yet. Cause I'm just a person. I am just a person. You guys, if any of you see me out in the wild, please come say hi. I love when you guys come say hi, you know, I don't bite. I promise. <laughs> um, I left a whimsy doll at Goodwill yesterday. What do you mean a whimsy? I don't know what a whimsy doll is. A whimsy doll. I don't know what that is. So how can you see that video? Which video, Carol? Not sure which video you mean. Which one? So all the video that I took over the weekend will start coming. I have two more videos that were stockpiled from before I left. And then, um, then the new stuff will start coming out. Thank you, Kathy's Crafty Room. That is so appreciated. Thank you so much. Um, I don't, I just don't know what a whimsy doll is. And I, I mean, I will just say, so I get a lot of comments about, you know, you left this and you left this. And honestly, you guys, I'm good with not picking up everything that could make money. That's not my thing. So when you see me shopping, I probably saw that doll, but it's not, it's not my niche. It's not the type of thing that I enjoy selling. Um, so the likelihood of it sitting over on a profit pile, uh, waiting to be listed and getting pushed further and further away is, is a high likelihood. And so that's how I make my decisions is I try to stick with stuff that really like when I handle it, I'm interested in it. I want to learn about it. I want to get home and research it and, and get it listed and all of that. So there are a lot of things that I leave behind. And I hope that 
you know, if you are in Vegas, you follow right behind me and you go grab those things if that's your niche. So I have no problem leaving stuff behind. Um, I do, I do get a little, um, I don't know what the word is. Not annoyed. Not, it's not, it's not annoyed, but it's per perplexed a little bit. Um, when people get frustrated with me for leaving things behind. And then I have a whole nother set of comments where people are mad that I don't leave anything for anybody else. So it's I, what I'm learning. And this will be a good segue into our topic is what I'm learning is that I can't please everybody. I can't. I have to work on doing what's best for me and my business. I'm not being selfish or self-centered, but simply focused on building what I've got, because in reality, if you see me building what I've got and the methodology around that, I want you to learn the methodology. I don't want you to pick up the same products I'm picking up per se. I want you to learn why I pick up those products so you can develop your why. So, cause that's, that's the whole reason that I'm called the niche lady is because it's all about developing a niche that serves you well, that makes you want to get the stuff listed, that draws your ideal customers in because you have kind of a, like a theme thing going. So that's what it's all about. I've, I've been a people pleaser my entire life and I'm really, really learning that that you cannot grow a business being that way. You, you can't, uh, you will drown. Uh, especially those of you who are doing YouTube channels. Like I have lots of friends that, you know, are doing YouTube channels and social media. If you are trying to conform to what everyone is telling you, you must do, you should do and do this better, you will drown. And, um, you don't want to get there because that, that's no fun. That's no fun. So you will, you will draw your right audience by just being you just be you don't try to be something that you're not i see some more of my friends showing up over in the chat i'm so, I'm so happy you guys are all here i kind of missed y'all on friday it was kind of a little weird not doing my live sale on friday i did that pre-recorded and it went okay it w there was there was a few little bugs here and there because youtube doesn't keep things in order very well, but for the most part, yeah. Oh, Tiffany, yeah, yeah. So when Tiffany I, and I film together, we have different editing and filming schedules. So you've already seen my footage of that, and hers is still coming out. Yeah. <laughs> ah, but it was a good trip. It was a good trip. The drive home wasn't too bad. I had a little stop where I, I tried to have a visit with my oldest daughter and ah, it didn't go so well. So long story, but <laughs> so I got home pretty like mentally drained as well as physically drained, but ready to rip roar and get back into it today. So let me ask you guys. How many of you get stressed out trying to run your business? And I got to wait for the lag to catch up for you to hear that. You guys are talking about savers. Yeah, I'm not a savers fan. I'm not a savers fan. So many things about savers that I just can't get on board with. <laughs> All of you. <laughs> Thank you, Judith. Totally. I got a totally from over on Facebook. Because this is streaming on Facebook as well. Raising your hands. You're stressed. Stress, <laughs> Tiffany. I know that's sarcasm. <laughs> okay. You guys are, you're saying like, so something I've learned about stress over time and, and try to deal with it this way is that it stresses anxiety. Stress is a feeling of being a bit out of control of a situation. There's actually two things I've learned. 
So the first thing I've learned is that that anxiety is not going to change anything. And I know Tiffany's going to be laughing at me right now because she sees my stress more than anyone. And you're over here. And she's always the one saying, it's all going to work out. It's all going to be okay. Tiffany is so... What's the word I have for you, Tiffany? You're just so... You're just so... Even. And I'm like... I'm like a crazy woman all over the place. <laughs> I get like, ah! <laughs> my kids are like, uh Oh, there goes mom. You know, something on the computer doesn't go right. Noah hears me and comes out of his room. Like, okay, like what now mom? <laughs> and then he's like, get out of here. Let me fix it. <laughs> so I'm not, I am definitely not saying that I am great at dealing with stress, but I do know in my mind, and I'm working on this, that that stress doesn't change the situation. It just robs me from the focus to be able to objectively look at the problem that needs to be solved and figure out a plan for solving it. So, so that's the first thing. That's what she says. Everything will work out just the way it should. It always does. And she says that to me and I need to like get it into my brain because it's really, it's true. It's true. Um, stress, I know you get stressed when you can't find something that you are, you sold and it's not showing up. Oh my goodness. I lose stuff all the time. So what's the solution to that problem? You're going to hate me saying this, but it's better organization of your inventory. If you're losing items, then it's it's either the physical organization or it's the digital keeping track of maybe eBay double listed something or so but that's the solution to the problem and then you have to figure out how to make that happen so that that problem never happens again. And and that's that's pretty much what it is. So one of the things that I went through is like, oh my gosh, I am so behind on my eBay and I'm looking, there's so many hours of the day, I can't get to it. I, that's the problem is that I, I don't, there's not enough of me to go around. The solution was I needed to hire help. And sometimes in your business, that's really scary to do because now you've taken on another expense. So the key to taking on that expense is have that person doing something that frees you up to do more money making activity. So if if your superpower is the photos, then that's what you need to be doing. If your superpower is the actual listing, then that's what you need to be doing. And have that person do the piece that is just time consuming. Is it cleaning up the products? Is it shipping? Maybe it is taking the pictures but utilizing as basically cloning yourself so that you can generate more money, which then pays for that. So that's the key is, and it was um, once when I did my, I did an event here I, I, for a couple of years, I did my event, um, more fun, bigger profits. And I got to bring in, he was a, like a multimillionaire. And I was, <laughs> I was like, working so hard to keep my composure. Like I had to go have lunch with the guy, you know, to talk about him coming to speak. And I was just like, it was so weird. <laughs> like, I mean, I can't tell you a fun little side story. So we went to a country club, which is where he said for us to meet. And, and I'm in, I'm in the Ford focus and there's only valet parking. And so when we were done, we go out there and he, he asks me to give him my valet ticket and I give him my valet ticket and, and he hands it to the guy and he hands, he goes, mine's the Bentley, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it was super cool though. So then he came and spoke at my event and, um, I had a panic attack is I've never had a panic attack on stage. 
Uh, but I literally had to run off stage. I was, it was like interview style. And then all of a sudden I was like, Hey, you're doing great. Can you talk to them for a minute? And I ran backstage and thought I was going to throw up. And I was like, my heart was racing. I had the cold sweats. I was just, that's never happened. I've done a lot of speaking engagements. That's never happened. So <laughs> I got myself pulled back together. And, and got back out there. But but one of the things um, I had asked him was, what is the secret to your success? The old cliche question, right? Here's what he said. And this is what was passed down to him from his dad. These words, I'm in trouble and I need help. Because so often we feel like we have to have the answer to everything and that, you know, um, and especially like, you know, for me, like when I don't have an eBay answer, I'm like, Oh gosh, I've got to come up with this answer. Everybody's counting on me. You know, how stupid am I going to look if I don't come up with this answer? But then I'm like, I don't have all the answers. I mean, I kind of know now where to go find the answers, but the thing is, is being able to, be real enough to just say, look, I don't have this. I can't help with this. I need help. Like in my business, knowing when to bring in help, like, and then my employees will tell you, like, I get a little control freaky. I do. I do. Um, but I'm aware of it and I give them permission to call me out on it because I don't want to be that way. You know, I would much prefer just to know everything's being done. And a perfect example of that was I was gone for the weekend and my, uh, um, my employee was here and she's, I walked into a house that was, I almost cried. It was so amazing. Stacks of boxes all packed up ready. Like she packed the house. Everything's just like packed up and ready to like, the dishes are done. She mowed half the lawn. Um, it's a big lawn. Um, and it was just like, I didn't control that. I just let her have the, the power to go do that. Like just without me hovering over saying like, cause I don't always have it right. I don't always know like the best order of things to do. And, and sometimes when you just let go, just acknowledge that they may not do it your way, but they're going to get the job done. And sometimes it's better than your way. That can turn into something super amazing, super amazing. Yeah. So let me catch up on your comments over here. I love how you guys chat together. What you guys talking about? What you guys talking about? Are we, what was there was an eBay question? I'm trying to like find what you guys are asking about. Yes, Clinton, I did get your emails about joining the Facebook group. So I'm, I'm not sure. I know sometimes the link in the description of my YouTube videos is not working correctly. But if you just go over to Facebook and type in search for niche to profit, it'll come up. My group will come up. It's it's niche to profit on eBay, Etsy and more. Yeah, so it could just be that link is broken from Facebook and I'll have to go try and work on that again. Um, but if you just go search on Facebook itself and then, yeah, there are a few questions to answer to get in and then you're, you're solid. You got to get in and then you'll be approved. We pretty much approve everyone who agrees to the group rules. Just a little FYI. I'm going back in the comments a little bit. So some of you, if you've had family helping, um, Teresa, I see you said when you had a store, your mom did all the cleaning and you did all the pricing. Yeah. Like, you know, the kids, the kids help, but they need a little nagging sometimes because they're teenagers. So. All right. I think I got 
back as far as I can go, and then it doesn't let me go anymore. So let me go see what you guys are saying now. You've done that. You get, I don't know what the issue is then, Clinton. That's very strange. I'll I'll look when this is done and see what maybe is going on there. Yep. You're always in the mindset that all of your questions are foolish. You need to not think that. Yeah. I'm going to have so many issues when I open. Yeah. There's no, there's no foolish questions. There really isn't. And, and that's one of those things where we let other people's opinions of us hurt us because that's where that comes from. It's like, if I ask this, somebody's going to think I'm stupid and that's, who cares? Like, if they think that way, they're kind of stupid. Okay, I'm just going to say it. Um, but that's one of the things, like my group, that's one of our, that's the first rule is you have to be kind and considerate. And you haven't got anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. You know, newbies are going to ask questions. And yeah, we've heard a lot of the same questions over and over, but that's because newbies have that question. Um, so we don't allow that over in my group. I'm kind of looking to see. So what was the question? So Julia, what's the question that you're, you're kind of responding to? Cause I didn't see the original question. Are we talking about pricing or what a, what a, what? I made, I made a course just for new, like I walked the newbies right through step-by-step. Step. Yeah. eBay's got their stuff. The thing that eBay doesn't give you is the perspective from a seller. eBay wants you to use their tools. They want you to go by their pricing suggestion. eBay wants you to do certain things that aren't necessarily in your best interest. They're in eBay's best interest. It's that's, I mean, can you blame them? They're a big corporation. Of course they do. Um, so the, the course that I developed is so that you can develop your own way of doing things that works for you, whether to make decisions on whether to use promoted listings or free shipping or like it walks you through how you make those decisions in your business. You have a lot of stuff at home that costs money to $12. And none of it is now worth three to four times that price. I still am a little, I'm, I'm seeing bits and pieces. Of, nope, you do not have to have an eBay or an Etsy page to join the niche to profit group. It helps because that's what we talk about a lot. But we talk, I mean, we identify things and we talk a lot about a lot, a blah, blah, talk about a lot of stuff. We also, if you are an eBay seller, we do a daily listing challenge. So uh, your new listing gets, you know, linked and goes out to the, I, what are we like 11,000? How many people do we have in that group now? It's growing. I'm pretty excited about how big the group's gotten. Hold on. Let me look. I'll tell you how many we have. So let me hear. Hold on. I'll tell you exactly how many people are in that group right now. We have 11,600 people in the group right now. That's what we have. I just lost my screen there. There it is. I'm not responding to anyone or any one question. I love it. Oh, thank you, Julie. Thank you. She's trying to sell items she has already has at home. So here's the thing. Okay. Because we're going to like that. I kind of see some key things coming up in all the groups out there that are like uh, eBay and reselling related. So there's a big, big hubbub right now about how the 1099s are going to now start reporting anything over $600 in sales. There are a lot of people who are freaking out over that. And one of the things, and the reason that made me think of it is one of the things someone said is like, well, what if I bought all this stuff years ago for myself um, and now I'm just selling it, 
you know, to make some extra money. That's a beautiful situation. And I'll tell you why. Because what you paid for it is what you paid for it. And so if you sell it, if it's not worth that much anymore and you're selling it, this happens a lot with clothing, you get to write off the original cost of that item. So if, if it puts you in the negative, even though, you know, technically you used it, you got your use out of it, you're not really negative. Like anything you get for it now is gravy because you bought it to use for yourself, right? So now you're selling it, but you get to take a loss. And when you get to take a loss, that's a write-off. And it can be a big write-off. And you can do that three out of five years. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong there. I think it's three out of five years. You can take a loss in your business before the IRS is going to like shoot red flags and, and let you stop calling it a business and they'll turn you into a hobby. And then there's different taxing and blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, so you just, you write off what you paid for it. It's beautiful. It's golden. Um, but if it's, you know, my parameter, and you'll hear me say this in my videos a whole lot, is I'm looking for $20 bills. And I set that $20 because of the time element involved for me in getting that item from point of purchase to point of getting into the new customer's hands. So... Uh, and I have a little bit higher cost of goods, technically, because I have to pay somebody else to do some of the jobs. Whereas some of you can do a $10. Um, some of you may be happy with $5. It, it all depends on how you value your time. So I take a roundabout, like, I want to make at least 50 bucks an hour. Like, that's that's my minimum that I'm willing to work for. So divide that by four. Oh gosh, I'm making myself do math. That's twelve fifty uh, for fifteen minute time frame, which is about how much time I give each item. So twelve fifty. I'm not doing this right. No, wait a minute. See, it's math and doing math in my head. Now I'm like all confused. So in order for me to, okay, I know how I do this. So in order for me to make that amount, if the item sells for 20 and let's just say I paid five for it, that's $15. Yeah, that is where I'm getting to. So 15 for 15 minutes, it comes out to 60, but who's counting? Um, so it's a very, very like vague system in my head. It just keeps me focused on not purchasing things that are not going to result in me making that dollars per hour that I'm looking to make. Did that make sense at all? Because I confused myself there. How did I do on the videotape auction? Um, did you receive good feedback on it? It was mixed. There was a lot of people who didn't like it. Um, it went okay. I mean, I know that if I had been live and in person, a lot of those things would have sold for more. But you know what? It it served its purpose for me to get away. So I'm really happy with it. <coughs> okay. Yes, it makes sense. Oh, good. And then Kim's really confused. So <laughs> what if you bought something years ago and you don't have a record of what you paid for it? Estimate. Estimate. So here again, it's that anxiety of worrying about being exact on something. And I can tell you, you know, you can like, uh, you know, I bought this wallet, you know, five years ago. I think I paid $10 for it. You know, it's okay. If I paid 12, I'm okay. If I paid five, it's still okay. What is it? Yeah. Um, because. The IRS is not going to come at you for getting one thing wrong. Okay. Everybody's really, really scared of getting things wrong. And then, oh gosh, then I'm going to get audited. And then, oh my gosh. But remember, it's, it's a 
bigger picture than that. It's really a bigger picture than that. So, I mean, unless you're purposely like trying to cheat the IRS, it's, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Um, what if we bought some? Oh, I already, I just answered that. You can also try selling the items and a lot to people. Sometimes we buy things and then learn that they aren't a good profit. Yeah. Yeah. And that, see, and that's the other thing I do too. Sometimes you'll see me buy multiples of something that, that don't equal that $20 bill. So that's one thing I do. A multi-quantity listing still when all is said and done equals that. Also putting a grouping together, you know, like I'm pampered chef. I know a lot of the pampered chef things that I picked up on their own. They're not worth me listing individually, but I can put them in a lot together. And now I've got the profit margin that I need to get. Okay. If I have a $5 into something, shipping fees, tax, need to set a standard to know how to price. Don't worry about the shipping. The, the customers pay the shipping. So that's like, whether you're doing free shipping or not, the customer is paying the shipping. You just have to put in the correct if you're doing free shipping, you need to know how much that shipping is to add to the price. Um, but if you're doing calculated, you don't need to know how much. You just need to know what it what it weighs and what the dimensions are. It costs the money. Uh, yes. Thank you, Tiffany. It costs the government a lot of money to conduct an audit. They're not going to come after you for selling items you don't want anymore. Thank you. Yes. Yes. And um, I guess we just have to give the disclaimer that I am not an accountant or CPA. Please consult with your own CPA or accountant for your tax advice. This is the opinion of the host of this program. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's truly it. The customer pays the sales tax. The customer pays the shipping. You do have to pay the fees and just know that your fees are going to be, and just figure around 15%. Just figure around 15%. And you're going to be okay. Got to figure that into it too. But, you know, here's the thing. If you haven't gotten started because you're anxious about all of this stuff, you're losing money. Like, isn't the anxiety about losing money? Like, if you do it wrong, you're going to lose money. Well, if you're not starting, you're losing money. So the best way to learn this business is just start doing. List your first item. Like get that first item under your belt and look at it and go, ah, it did that. Now this is important. This is super important. You must allow yourself credit for doing things. Give yourself a win. You know, when we are out working for a company, our win is a bonus. Sometimes our win is just getting that paycheck. Our win is our boss telling us we did a good job. You know, we get kind of that validation. So we have to do that for ourselves. Now, I'm bad, bad, bad at this, but I had a business coach tell me every single day I should be making a win list. I should, at the end of the day, look at what I've accomplished during the day and pat myself on the back and say, good job. Because why not? It is those wins that motivate us to keep doing more. And to keep. so you got to get that first, you got to get that first one under your belt and just say, I did that. I did it. And then when you get your first sale, oh my gosh, celebrate. You can celebrate these things. Where can you see the proceeds I have put into the niche foundation? That's an odd question. Um, I have them in a bank account right now. I have to pay taxes on them until the 501c3 goes, until the nonprofit becomes a 501c3. Once it becomes a 501c3, all of the accounting will be public knowledge. Until then, I'm paying my taxes like everyone else on it. Um, but that's just like asking, that's like me asking to see your bank account. Like, do you not trust that I'm putting money into the foundation? Because that's kind of like the vibe I'm getting. But, and if you don't trust me, then don't buy from me. You know, my, my word is trust me. I, I've spent thousands on attorneys. That all is part of that. 
and there is a fund for the niche foundation. All right. You sell on eBay, but don't have a store. Do I recommend opening a store? I bet my regular viewers know how I'm going to answer that. Open the store. Yes. The store is not just about a savings on fees. It's not just about how many free listings you get. The store is your ability to set up and build a brand. It's your ability to market your items. It's your ability to come up with categories that help your customers get to the right thing where they want to get to. I, I'm just, I'm not going to give it any more attention. Um, but yes, you want a store. A store is fantastic. I highly, highly recommend if you're serious about this, you open a store. I do have easy access to my accounting, by the way. Of course I do. Does that mean I'm going to put it out to uh, 32,000 people on my YouTube channel? Mm, no. <laughs> it does take a long time to get the 5013. And, and it, it's taking particularly long because of all the craziness that um, this country is going through right now. Yes, plus the stores are cheap. Thank you. I like that bird finds. Um, but yeah, the, we were told that the department that approves 501c3s has been whittled down to nothing um, because it's not an important department to them. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, just got an, I'm sorry from the other room. I don't, I don't know what that means. What if we aren't constantly putting items up? A store is still beneficial. Well, if you aren't consistently putting items up, they have to wonder how serious you are about building this as a business. If it's just a hobby, then, you know, my advice goes for those who want to make this a serious income, no matter what level of income you want consistently, it really is about doing the work so that you have that consistency. Because what will happen if you don't put items up consistently, you won't have consistent sales. Whether you have a store or not, it just won't work. Um, you do not have to be asked by eBay to open a store. You can subscribe to a store anytime you want. I love, I love how, you know, conversations kind of like, um, transition into different things, but now I got an, I'm sorry. I don't know what that means. Thank you. Mainly thrifts. Thank you. Oh, nice. Yay! I will tell you this, that, um, I'm sorry, I'm not like looking at you right now. I'm like trying to watch the chat. Um, is that um, I have set myself a November 1st date for getting my eBay back on track. Um, because I've let my, I've let it, this, this house that I'm living in has just, it, it's put a real, what's the word? I'm like lost for words today. It has caused me to just fall apart a little bit when it comes to building my business. I mean, I've been kind of just in this, this survival mode and um, we're excited about the new house. We're, we're energized to like set up some new family habits. Like we're designating a, a family game night. Um, just some different things that are going to happen, but the eBay side of things is November 1st is my date to get everything back up and running right before Christmas uh, so that we can rock and roll that again. Oh yeah. The landlord, I, I am going to take video. Um, once I'm out of here and I can sh really show you stuff, like I am going to take a video and show you some of this stuff. Cause it's, I really think this house needs to be condemned. 
I really, really think it does. It's really bad. It's really bad. Um, so I've been living with that stress, you know, with the AC going out five times in eight months. Moving is a huge undertaking. You are correct. You are correct. You're selling your aunt's items. Thousands, basically, a hoarding house. Is it true that once I hit 20000 in sales on eBay, the IRS gets involved to tax me? So, Kathy, that's just when a, a 1099 is triggered. Honestly, you should be reporting from the time you make the first dollar. You should be reporting that income. That is the advice that any tax professional would give you. Um, do people always do that? No, they don't. But um, that is, if you're making money, you should be reporting that money. Like, so I would not wait for 20000 I would be tracking that selling and because you take the deductions too. So it's not all taxable income. It's the only thing that's taxable is your net profit. So you have the money that you bring in, which includes the shipping that the, the shipping that the person paid, the whole gross amount, and then you get to deduct the cost of the shipping, the fees, the packing materials, um, the portion of your house you're using for your business. Like there's this whole slew of things you get to deduct to come down to your net profit, and only the net profit is taxable income. So, but again, speak with a tax professional um, because I cannot encourage you not to claim every penny that you made. Taxes, don't look at it. Don't let taxes, do you know what taxes mean? Okay, I'm gonna flip your way of thinking about taxes. If you have to pay taxes, that means you're making money. And yes, the more money you make, the more taxes you pay. But you're making money in order to pay that taxes. So it's not scary. If you flip your mindset around taxes, it's a beautiful thing. Ha! That means I made money. So just think of it that way. Yeah. I'm going to call you out for being a troll there, vintage lovers. You're like, nice, nice YouTube handle, but you know, you're, you're acting very aggressive in the chat. So move along. <laughs> Better yet, marry your tax professional. Paying taxes is making money. Yeah. Is it true that you can technically say up to 20,000 is a hobby? Not necessarily. No, that's not, that's not how the IRS looks at hobby versus business. So again, you're going to want to consult. Listen, guys, if you're doing this to make money, you're doing this as a business. Hobby is if you're doing it for fun. If you're doing it just because, you know, you got a couple things you want to list on eBay. If you're consistently listing, you're buying and selling things, that is a business. It's not a hobby. So just be professional from the start. Build it and they will come. And I think you will do better, Melissa. We, it's been a rough couple years for everybody. It has been a rough couple years. And I tell you, online, we're going into a fourth quarter. And the, this is just We've gone totally off topic now, but we're going in. I can maybe not because fourth quarter can be stressful. Fourth quarter is when like the majority of business takes place for online retailers historically. And so we are going into fourth quarter. So in and of itself, it's going to be good because it's fourth quarter. Um, but there's something happening y'all need to know about. Retail stores are in a bind because they are not getting product. They are not getting supplied. There's, 
I, and I, I don't want to talk about the why it's happening because then that can go in a really bad direction, but supply is not meeting the stores, which means people are going to have to go online to find their Christmas presents this year. And that's going to be good for all of us. So the way to avoid the stress that comes with an overabundance of business in fourth quarter is be ready. Like right now, right now today, if you haven't done it, go to USPS.com and order your priority mail supplies. Now, if you have a store, you want to wait a few more days because then we go into the new quarter of getting your free shipping supply coupon from eBay and you can order your eBay shipping supplies. So you have all your supplies. You're not worried about running out of supplies. So that's number one, just be preemptive to that stress and just have a plan in place for how you're going to deal with more business. What a great thing to plan for, right? So that you don't get hit with a lot of stress. Um, let's see what other questions I'm missing here. How do you get taxed on live sale profits? You, you claim it. So, you know, for me, everybody pays me through PayPal. That's where the money goes. That's where I will get the 1099 from. PayPal is going to send me a 1099 for every penny that went into my PayPal this year. And then that's how I have to figure that income versus the expenses to offset that income to come up to the net profit off of that. I'm not a tax pro, not a tax pro. I hate, I hate the taxes and the numbers and all that with like, but it is a necessary part of running this business. So you can't just say, I don't like it. I'm not going to deal with it. You got to know your numbers. You got to know your numbers. <laughs> How do you find a tax pro? Well, um, like there's a lot of good recommendations. I have had, I had a whole show on taxes, you guys with not your dad's CPA. Uh, if you go back and look through my lives, you'll find that one. That's all we talked about was taxes from a real tax professional. Um, what in, I'm having to delete comments from Facebook. Oh my goodness. <laughs> some weird stuff coming through. All right. All right. <laughs> if you discard something, hi, Peanut. Hi. Hi. I'm going to pull you into the video if you, uh, <laughs> you stand there too long, girlfriend. Um, if you discard something you bought from a thrift store because it doesn't sell or it is a broken, can you deduct the purchase price or what you valued it? Absolutely. So things that get broken, you can deduct the cost. Things that you re-donate back, you can take a write-off for the donation. So yeah, that, that is an offset to your income. What do I recommend for labels when you're too small to invest in a printer? So um, by the way, I save up for the Rolo. Save up for the Rolo. It is life-changing, wonderful. Um, it's about 200 bucks. Um, but the time it will save you. Oh my gosh, it's wonderful. So save up for that. Uh, in the meantime, you can just, you can do, well, there's a couple things you can do. You don't even actually have to print the labels. If you don't mind going to the post office, they have a QR code. When you sell something, there's a QR code. You take that to the post office and the post office will scan that and print the label and put it on the package. What you don't want to do is go pay for the postage at the post office. Don't ever do that. And I don't really recommend going to the post office even for the QR code, but it is an option. The other thing is just a regular printer, uh, you know, ink and paper and tape it on, tape it on. But that's expensive. That's expensive. And if you track the cost of that, you're going to see investing in a label printer is going to save you in the long run. Um, Hold on. My chat's jumping. My chat's jumping. Do I recommend opening a second store? Not unless you got your first store rocking and rolling because your focus will be split. 
So if you've got a store and it's kind of on autopilot, you might even have like an employee who just keeps that running. And now you have a completely different niche that you'd like to build, then yes, do a separate store. Like I have a completely separate store for plush. All it is is plush. That's it. That's all you will find in that store. And that doesn't really fit into my vintage antiques collectibles store unless it's like an antique plush. So yeah, I do have two separate, but I will tell you if one of them's going to suffer, it's going to be the plush because I have to make sure that main store is my focus and that one's operating on a level that I need it to before I give attention over to the other one. So Can you print off your phone with a Rolo printer? I don't think so. It's not wireless. So I don't think so. You have to be wired in. Yeah, printer ink is so expensive. For sure. Yeah. Printer ink. Like, you can get printers for $25, but the ink is like, you know, 50 bucks a pop every time you need you need new new ink. So really look at your costs. Look at your costs. And you might think you're saving money by not getting like a Rolo printer. But when you look at what you're spending on that printer and ink, it's going to even itself out. That's why I say it pays for itself. I, I do. I do, Janet. It's down. I, is it in this description? It should be in this description. It's in all of my video descriptions. I'm just not sure if it's in my live description, but yes, I do. I am still like working on them to let me give you a discount too, which they just don't want to do. Yeah, they have to be plugged into the computer. That's what I thought. Do I suggest a light box? Yeah, absolutely. Your lighting for your pictures is, is everything. And here's the thing. Make a list of priorities if money is tight. Like, okay, we're going to wrap this up with this. If money is tight, and that's a big stressor. So money equals stress for a lot of us. So look at the things you need to grow your business. A light box, uh, a label printer, um, inventory, whatever those things are, prioritize. Like, okay, you know you need inventory. So what you have to do is you have that inventory. That's your first priority and determine how, what percentage you're going to take from each sale and invest it back into your business. The more you invest back into your business, the faster your business will grow, the better you will be in the long run. I see a lot of people take every sale and are kind of living sale to sale to pay a bill. And, and I get, I get that you need the money, but you will keep yourself in that place if you don't put that money back into your business. So just always be looking at how much can you put back into the business? Because remember, you're not guaranteed any sales. So a sale is not something that you can say, okay, my phone bills do over here. I'm going to wait till I sell this product. That's not how it should work. You should have a means to pay your bills until you build your business up to the point where it can take over your bills. If that makes sense. So if that means hustling on a side job or, you know, doing, doing something that generates a steady income, even if part-time while you grow your business to take that over is what I recommend. And then prioritize those things that will make your business better. So I say product, the ability to make that product look better. So lighting, and then the means to make your process faster, which would be your printer. But I, I mean, a lot of us start with just a white sheet and some lights. You know, you got to do what works just to get it started. You don't, don't strive for perfection. That's another stressor. All too often we look at what everybody else is doing especially people who are selling tens of thousands of dollars. We go, oh, I have to be doing that. And you don't, you don't, you can aspire to do things that way, 
but give yourself a plan, give yourself a, a, a way to get to that. I started, I don't even think when I started, we just had film cameras, but, <laughs> but when digital cameras and all of that came into effect, it was the white backgrounds weren't even a thing. You just, you took a picture. So it's been a progression and now it's like, oh yeah, now I know how to use the white sheet and the good lighting and uh, my next thing is to get the big light box where on all sides it's light and it's not just the, you know, the photo studio, but I built up to that. You know, my, my business can afford that now because I've started down here and there's nothing wrong with doing it, you know, an inexpensive way first. Don't should on yourself is what I like to say. You do what works for you to get the results you want. And you can analyze that. Nobody else. I mean, you can get suggestions and comments and feedback. But at the end of the day, look at your listings. Look at what you're putting out and the results it's bringing. Test things. Test new lighting. Test, you know, a different setup. Test a different way of writing your titles. Test a different way of pricing. And at the end of the day, determine. Did that have an improvement? Did it keep me the same? Did it lower my sales? And take that information and use it to say, okay, yeah, I'm going to do that now. Or no, that didn't work. I'm going to do this. But you've got to make those decisions. You've got to learn to look at your particular business and see what's working and what ain't. Because you are the one who has to reap the rewards or the repercussions. So if I tell you, yes, this is the way you must do this, then I'm, I'm not a very good teacher because what works for me may not work for you or you may hate that setup. So it's really about analyzing your own results and determining, are you happy with that? If you're happy with that, doesn't matter what me or anybody else tells you is the right way. Um, go with what works for you. And, and, Stop letting other people shit on you. <laughs> oh, lots more eBay questions. Another question is when you post something, but you'd want to edit it, do they charge you for going in and editing it? Nope. You can edit your stuff till the cows come home. Yes. Thank you to my moderators over there. My moderators are amazing. Those are the people over there with the blue wrenches next to their names. Many of them have channels of their own. I would encourage you to go check out their channels. Um, and they help me keep things running smoothly. Uh, so I really, really thank them, especially when we get, you know, the trolls and the, uh, the negative Nellies over there who want to discourage. I don't want anybody to be discouraged. I don't want anybody to, to feel like this can't work for them. Anybody can do this. It's, but it's work. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and say it's not work. It's work. But to me, it's worth it. That's why I say my tagline of go be profitable, but make it fun because it can be so fun and rewarding. If you build the business that you want, not that somebody else thinks that you should do or have, it's the business that you want that makes it fun. So I'm going to leave you with that. And I'm going to say, if you are stressed out, remember, stress doesn't change anything. It really, if anything, it can make things worse because you can make yourself sick in the process with all the worry. So release the anxiety, deal with the problems that you can deal with. And if it's not deal withable, then you got to let it go. And let the chips fall where they may and then sort it out later. So with that, thank you so much, everyone, for being here today. Now, go be profitable and make it fun. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye, everyone. Thank you, moderators.